All right. Well, we are definitely honored today to have David Solomon with us in Cobuzz. And uh, he, he's known as the chief evangelist, chief high-res music evangelist. So, David, welcome. Really good to Thank see you. Again. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah. And uh, why don't we start with kind of a general overview, overview from you about what Cobuzz is and what you do there as chief evangelist. Uh, yeah, okay. First off, people actually think I gave myself that name. <laughs> I wanted to be like, uh, uh, you know, chief uh, biz dev uh, guy or whatever. But uh, that, believe it or not, they came up with this name in, uh, in France. And uh, so, hey, I embrace it. I, I do love music and, and I am pretty much an, an evangelist when it comes to music. I'm just not sure I'm, I love the name. But Cobuzz, uh, I think probably most of you guys know what it is. It's the, uh, it's the uh, first true high-resolution service to, uh, to um, start streaming music at up to 24192 resolution. Most of the uh, collection is at 1644, but there's about 2.5 or so million uh, cuts that are, uh, that are in 24-bit. Uh, in some way, from 2444 to 24192. Um, it's a really cool little service in that we also do a, a download store. And I don't know if you've been there or not. If you haven't been to the download store and you are that kind of, uh, of, of a uh, consumer, um, the, uh, the download store is really, really inexpensive. So it's usually about uh, 15, 20, sometimes 30% cheaper than the usual places that you would go to find downloads because we're subsidized what, uh, some of what we can do this. And then there's uh, lots of sales that happen on that site. And really the biggest reason I like to support it is because of artist support. Um, I buy a good bit of stuff off of Cobus, but it's, it's not because I really need the music. Um, some things I've already, I already own, but I do think it's a really, really good way to support artists. Um, we're also a company that believes in the audio industry. Uh, when I came to Cobuzz, they said, look, you're, you're hired and, and here's a budget. What do you want to do with it? I'm going, I want to, I want to invest in the audio industry. I want to actually not only promote music, but promote the people that are, um, that are, that are listening to music. So we've got on our roster of partners, uh, retailers, we call those the guys, the Cobus Society. We've got press um, that are our partners because they need this kind of thing as well. Um, and then we've also got uh, manufacturers. And in the support, we, uh, we give these guys um, logoed uh, playlists and you know we talk about them a lot on social I do a show every Thursday on uh, streaming music matters and all the Cobus platforms that feature um, something to do with music whether it's a manufacturer or someone from the press or my actual favorite are uh, the engineers that I have on um, I've been a recording and, and mixing engineer my whole life, and those guys fascinate me. What they do is, um, is super, super important, and I hope you've noticed over the last five years, engineers in general are getting better and better. So we want to support all of those guys. This, uh, this next week is going to be a, a really, really fun one. I'm going to have Cookie Marenko on from uh, Blue Coast. Lucas Records, kind of a, a place that's sort of close to you guys, but Cookie has been a really, really good friend for a long time. And prior to me knowing her in person, uh, I was a huge, huge fan of her work. So we'll have Cookie on um, this week and we'll be talking about why high resolution is important uh, for recording engineers. We had Bill Schnee on not long ago. I don't know if you know him, but he's the... Um, He's the guy res that's responsible for about 500 of the best albums ever recorded, starting with uh, uh, Thelma Houston, uh, Pressure Cooker. You guys probably all remember that quite well. Uh, and then moving on to the Boss Gag stuff and the Toto stuff. And he's, he's just got an amazing career. And it's, it, it, it's, not, it's not by chance, right? 
this guy knows what he's doing or otherwise every single album he comes out with wouldn't sound just incredible. So we had Bill on as well. And Bill's talking about, you know, the importance of high resolution. And one of the best stories that, that he told, which is really quite short uh, uh, with, with me telling it, but it, he, he said to me, the first time I recorded in 24192 was the first time the glass was removed. And I'm going, what do you mean by that? He goes, it sounded exactly in the studio like it sounded on my recording. It's the first time that's ever happened. And so, you know, that's really neat having people like that on. But uh, yeah, Copas is, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to make a difference in the right way, not just another company um, offering music. There's a lot of those. And I'm guessing in not too distant future, there's going to be more. Well, why isn't Apple high res? Why isn't Spotify high res? There, this is going to come because the barriers are are breaking down quite quickly, and there's really just no reason for MP3, which is something I'm also quite proud of. We're the first company that made a stand against MP3. We're going, uh, you don't need it. If you do need it, there's a lot of services, almost all of them, that have it. So you can't have it from us. If you want MP3, you got to go somewhere else. We dropped it. So we do not uh, stream MP3 because we do not believe in MP3. So that's, uh, that's us. <laughs> one, of the, one of the questions that came from the membership, was Francesca is asking, who will, will, will Cobas allow purchase of music in MQA or DSD format for download? In addition no, to we, we don't do either. Uh, at least not by uh, not by strategic choice. There's there's one company out there called 2L that they deliver nothing but MQA. So in that instance, yeah, you can buy it at MQA. But no, um, we don't do DSD, nor do we do uh, nor do we do uh, MQA. Not that I think there's anything wrong with it. God bless if you like it. I think you should get it. Yeah. Uh, corollary to that, um, Dan has a very good question. He says he's very happy with Copas. He's been surprised by the number of albums available in high-res versions and is curious about the provenance of those files. Where do they come from? How many of them are there legitimately higher res versus simply up, up sampled versions of the standard Red Book files? What can you tell us about that? I can tell you that that's, that's kind of an old question. I don't know anybody that's up sampling anymore. That's just not the way to do it. Um, people were people were going nuts in the 80s and 90s trying to get better quality out of digital recordings, which back then most of them, in my opinion, were absolutely horrible. So you had people that were taking um, 1644 files and making them 2488 or even worse, uh, some, something that the math didn't work with, like you know 24192, um, and almost every single time the the results were not even as good as as the um, as the original. So the only place we get our files from are straight from the studio. Um, we never touch them, and we are assured that they're not upsampled. That these are files that are that are um, that are true uh, uh, files, or we would just do all of them like that, right? Um, if something does get bias, which it's entirely possible when you're dealing with millions and millions of cuts. Um, it's not very many and I haven't been, I, I don't know of any that I've heard that have been like that, nor has anyone um, hit a spectrum analyzer and, and written me and gone, hey, this is not truly high res. Although I can tell you when I was first starting, when the, uh, when the uh, service was first starting, there was a few files that, that said 1644 or 2496, and they weren't that at all, mm -hmm. which wasn't a product of someone us trying to fool anyone. It was just simply a mislabeling. Um, and then there was a couple of times that we would listen to something that said, you know, it was a 1644 uh um, file and it was a 320 kilobit per second file. So we have to write the record label and go, okay, you guys delivered the wrong thing. We take that down. We wait till the net, till the real one comes in and then we upload that. But other than a mistake, no, nothing is upsampled. Um, I think we leave that to companies that are 
really good at upsampling and you know when it's being upsampled. Like Rune actually does a pretty good job. They just have a doubling feature that actually works pretty good. Um, and then when you're dealing with companies like DCS, they, those guys do a, do a superb job of upsampling. But um, typically, um, I'm, I'm sort of with you. I don't, I don't really like the practice and I think it's dishonest and uh, wish it would have never happened. Yeah. Agreed. That's Steve, a great I, question, though. Yeah, it was good. One. Steve has another good question. Apart from acting as a vast library of music, how do you see Cobas distinguishing itself from, from other streaming services? And do you foresee any integration with other players in the business by adding value to listeners, including Rune? For example, seeking to expose the listeners to new musical experiences using AI software, thereby helping un unappreciated talent and also cross fertilize across genres. It's going to be a while before we do AI. Um, everything that we do now is, is from humans, uh, er, and, it, and it is a totally dedicated staff. But um, we've been asked about that uh, before, and I'm sure at some point in the future we'll have some AI features, but right now everything is, everything is uh, done by, by human. We've got a young lady that works for us in the New York office. Her name is Sujan Hong, and this is literally all she does all day long every day. She makes playlists. She uh, refines playlists. She does all of our new releases. So I'll, most everything that we do is, is from a, it's on a manual process. I'm not quite sure what you mean by Rune. We're, we're associated with Rune. Rune works with us and Tidal. Those are the only two streaming services in the United States that, that work with Rune as far as I know. Um, so I wasn't really really clear on the rune question that you had, but if it's anything to do with their AI or their radio, um, I like it. I like it a lot, and a lot, and I like the way that they uh, the way that they determine who you are. Hmm. Corollary to that, Jeff asked a question. Experts tend to give the edge to Cobas over title in terms of sound quality. Is there a specific reason why that you know, you know of? You know, no, because if you go to the Tidal channel, you'll you'll hear just the opposite. They're both really good services. We just don't mess with anything. Uh, and we've got a really, really clean platform. And I hear this all the time, believe me. And and it is very flattering and I and I do very much appreciate it. But all I can tell you is there's no tricks. We just don't do anything to it. Um and I got to tell you, from a preference standpoint, I agree. I think I like I like it better than Tidal as well. Uh, but we're not talking night. There's very few night and day differences anymore, and certainly between Tidal and Cobuzz, there's no night and day difference. They're both very very good services. I don't know if you know, but I brought Tidal in uh, when they came to the United States. It was the first streaming company that I worked with, and. I, gotta tell, I was very proud to work for that company. I think they're a good company. Um, they also work very hard. They've got a good bit different philosophy than I've got, uh, which um, from a karma standpoint, I think we're way, way ahead of those guys there. Uh, because when I was with Title, I actually had this same uh, philosophy of really supporting the industry. Uh, up in front. And when I went to work for these guys, when I went to work for Tidal, they were called WIMP. This was way before Jay-Z bought these guys, right? Um, we, I, I remember going to Oslo and saying, um, you do realize you can't call it WIMP when you get to the United States, right? It's kind of the opposite of what it is. And so they, they came up with a new name. I went over a couple months later, they told me it was going to be called Tidal. And um, and when we came out, we didn't do high resolution. There was no MQA at that point. We just were the first service that did 1644. And I got to tell you, I was super, super proud to bring the first full resolution uh, streaming service to the United States. And I cannot believe lightning strikes twice at the same place because mm -hmm. I get to bring Cobas to the United States and not with just 1644, but with full resolution that a lot of us in this group, we used to pay big, big money for those recordings. 
Um, like if you happen to have the earth, wind, and fire recording, uh, the recordings or the, um, uh, well, well, there's just tons of them. Stevie Wonder. First off, you were in the, at the cool kids table for sure. Uh, but if you had those recordings, you probably play, paid a, a whole lot of money for them. I remember paying for um, uh, Illinois Jacket, the swing of things about maybe seven, eight years ago. And I think I paid $60 for that album. And, you know, it was like a huge prize, right? And I would play it for my friends and they would go, oh my God, I've never heard anything like it. It was like this 1957 recording released in 58. So it was mono. But man, when you turn this thing on, it gave me cold chills. The first time I heard it, my 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 uh, little hairs all stood up and I'm going, oh my God, this experience, the saxophone sounds like it's in the room. So I bought it immediately and, and played it for so many people. And then I remember going to work for Copa's uh, a little over a couple of years ago. And I was just sort of messing around. I'm, what? I wonder if they've got this. Da -da -da -da, boom. And I'm going, no way they've got this. They had it in 24192. I hit play and I almost started crying because now I'm going, this is the same recording that I've got. And by the way, if you're dealing with a recording that maybe sounds a little different on Cobuzz than your, than it sounds out of your, your oppo or out of your whatever you're playing um really it's it's it can only be a path it, it's it can only be a different path that those two um that those two uh signals are, are taking because the actual numbers are the same the ones and zeros are the same the on and offs are the same so the only difference really can be the path that it's taken and i've i hear that from time to time as well oh yours sounds better than my CD player or my CD player sounds better than yours. So it's, it's not coming through the same DAC or it's got a different uh, uh, digital cable or it's, there's, a, there's uh, 50 reasons that it could sound different, but it's not typically, or a lot of times that people think it's a different recording. It's not even a different recording. It's just a different path that you're taking. Hmm. Speaking of, uh, did I, did I, did I resolve the end of that question? If I didn't, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think you handled it pretty well. I, I was curious, David, uh, what is your philosophy about the musicians these days? They, they've had the short end of the stick for a while now, ever since CDs came out. Oh boy, I hope I don't get in trouble for this. Um, I feel for them. I mean, I really do. And, and I am a huge advocate of musicians in general. Uh, I are one. Uh, so many of my friends are, are musicians and, and darn good musicians. And so many of them are just suffering quite badly. L let's start with the guys from the street guys, right? The guy you see in the subway or the guy you guys see on the BART. Um, nobody's on the BART. I mean, these guys are hurting just as bad as everybody else. They're musicians. And a lot of these guys made their living, maybe not like, you know, Jay-Z, but these guys made somewhat of a living doing that. All, even those guys are hurting. And I got to tell you, it just breaks my heart to the core. Uh, for the musicians that are professional musicians, if you don't know this, there, there's a book in the 80s that I read that, that, that meant a lot to me in it, in it prevented me from blaming other people uh, for circumstances that were just inevitable. Um, I read a book called Who Moved My Cheese? Did, did any of you, I'm, I won't ask because nobody can really answer. We're not, not really that live. But if you read that book, um, it probably had some impact on you that no matter how good you do what you do today, tomorrow the rules may change. And if the rules change, then you got to figure out a different way to do it. In our businesses, in every single one of you, I can almost promise you that your business model has changed several times since you've started. And you had to almost reinvent yourself or, the, or your business or the way that you do business or you die. And unfortunately, that is where we are with musicians today, because no longer are you going to get a hundred million dollar deal to put out 10 records by anyone. You got to kind of do that yourself, right? 
the way I see it is you've got to be much more engaged with your audience these days. So there's some examples that I can give you. Like there's these, there's these two young ladies from originally Calhoun, Georgia. They're, they're, they're since in Nashville, they're called uh, Larkin Poe. Um, just two sisters, but boy, they are, they're so good. They're so talented. One of the, one of the young ladies plays a, a, a slide still, and I mean, she, or sorry, a slide dobro, and she is like the queen of the slide. She blows me away. And her sister, Rebecca, she can sing. She's got a voice. These pipes are so, so strong. She can play the guitar like, like crazy, but if they were to wait until their album hit or until someone promoted them, they would probably be, you know, trying to get a job as a waitress at a restaurant that is probably closed right now. But instead, they're taking the bull by the horns, and they've been doing this for years, and it's gotten them just thousands, hundreds of thousands of, of, of uh, uh, fans. Um, they'll set their little iPhone right in front of themselves, and they'll just start welling out of tune. And they are fantastic. And what they do is they connect with their audience personally on a personal level even though they're probably bigger than their audience or anyone in their audience they've, ta they've taken a step down level i think i call it a very humble level um and and they're talking to me and you and they put out all these videos and the more they put out the more fans they get now they're getting or getting asked to do gigs all over the world because they dared to do something a little bit different they dared to to come off of the pedestal and go, let's do something real. And now on, on YouTube, I hope you guys have been seeing there, there's a lot of musicians that are starting to do this YouTube and, and, and Facebook and Instagram and a, and a lot of them, but I love this. I love that personal connection to the real artists. And I think it gives us a different reason and a real reason and a human reason to support them. I'll give you an example of that. Um, the, maybe it was a, maybe it was two, three months ago. I'm, I'm working away and, I, and I look at, at, uh, Facebook because I'm on there with streaming music matters and Cobas all the time. So I kind of got to be on there and, and I'm, I'm, uh, scrolling down. I see Ricky Lee Jones is playing in her living room. Now I got to tell you, I've got a heavy, heavy love affair with Ricky Lee Jones music and to see her in her own living room um, pouring her heart out. Wow. Where's the PayPal, you know, but please, where's, where's her, her Vimeo? Where's her, let me support this person. That's, that's, giving something back that's that's uh that's concerned with her fans um so i think there's just a different way and a different approach that musicians have, are going to have to take now and in the future uh, because it's no longer going to be quite as easy to just become an automatic rock star you're always going to have your you know your ed sheeran's or your billy eilish you're always going to have those those standouts but if you think about it in history that's always been like that it's always been that one standout that made it from region to region i look at this new digital medium is oh my god i if i would have had this when i was a kid i'd probably be a rock star now instead of talking about them right because because there's just so many resources now that that musicians have that they didn't have before so wow there's a bunch of sides to that coin and i, I hope that didn't come across crass or uncaring because because it's certainly not that i'm very caring of our artists and i think it's so important that we support them but i also think it's a really really important that these that these people are creative and they find other ways to make 
make their their the money that they need to make in these time it not only in these COVID times even after COVID it's just not the same we have to do more we have to reach out more as musicians and as artists if we're going to make it but the cool thing is there is this personal connection that can be made now that couldn't be made in the 70s or 80s or 90s so along with the bad there's a lot of good um, so I, I hope the musicians out there that are listening to this can, can take this with the, with the, uh, with the heartfelt, um, strategy that I'm trying to convey. Yeah, it's a tough one. No, no, knowing what, you know, can you predict where the future of this industry is going? To which industry? The music industry. How are, um. It'll never go away. You know, this is the beautiful thing about it. It will never go away. And if people tell me, I, I, I just hate it when people say, oh, well, there's no good music anymore. <laughs> there's so much good music. It's crazy. Where will the industry go? Music will become more accessible, easier to, to humans. So they don't have to seek it out the way that we sought it out. Um, so I, I see the industry uh, very similar to the way I've been describing it for the last 10 minutes. I think it's going to be a lot of creative musicians uh, that get out and figure out how to get in front of people that aren't playing, you know, 60000 hundred, two hundred thousand dollars dollars sorry, uh, seat arenas. Um, and if you, it's not hard to find if you look. Look, just look on look on YouTube. There's there's so much good stuff out there. Go on to Cobuzz. There is so much good stuff out there. So I I find that I think that that our our industry is going to expand quite a bit. And then the personal attention that a lot of bands got, like when we were young probably won't happen nearly as much anymore because of the vast amounts of music that we that we can consume anybody i i i won't say anybody out there i'll say a whole lot of you guys out, out there were just like me when i was growing up i was in front of my fm radio waiting for that song yeah. please don't talk over that song because I got to learn how to play it on my drums. But please don't, because it's got a great first, like, there it is, click, you know, and, and then you're, you're waiting and you're waiting and you're waiting and you're just thinking to yourself, please don't talk over the last part of the song. And then you hit click and then it's done. That's why these days when people tell me MP3 sucks, I'm going, yeah, you know what? At the bottom line, MP3 really doesn't suck. What sucked was FM on a cassette tape with the DJ playing over it. That's what <laughs> sucked. So, so what about vinyl? Do you listen to vinyl yourself? Oh yeah, yeah. I've got you you wanna see uh, you wanna see my systems just so yeah. you can kind of get a idea Absolutely. of what I've got. Th these are my these are both my systems I've I put together. Can, can you see that? Yeah. So up in the upper left hand side is the uh, it's an icon system. It's a uh, Gail uh, Gail Gail Sanders uh, from he used to do Martin Logan. Yeah. And if you'll look over there, you see a uh, VPI Prime. And I've got a couple cartridges. I've got right now. I've got a, a Grado signature on it, and but I've also got uh, one I really like a lot. Um, from from soundsmith called the um oh my gosh i'm totally blanking now voice no it's the um Squaro. no <laughs> okay I'm, I'm sorry it, it's about a 1500 dollars cartridge so you you guys probably know that but i just absolutely love this system and not too long ago i got a, a little um a little pie because i wanted to i wanted to try out some of those computer pieces the you know, really cheap ones. And so now I've got a pie hooked up to this system, but I just got downstairs a name that I'm just about, I'm going to try that out. I can't wait to, to hook that up. Those things uh, really sound good from what I understand. If you look on, uh, uh, so there's the front uh, view and a side view of, of the system. And then if you look on the bottom, that's the system that I get to listen to every day. That's the system I'm sitting in front of right now, which is a pair of Martin Logan 11As um, with about 300 watts on the uh, the panels. And 
if you know anything about the 11 A's, there's a couple of eight inch woofers on the bottom of those with, uh, with uh, I think it's 400 watts a side. And I got to tell you, these things are about, about a meter from my ears. Um, and it's, I feel like my poster in the background, I am, I'm truly the Max L man. Um, but they're both just fantastic systems. And unusually enough, they're the, they're maybe the first, they're, they're definitely the first systems I've had in this house. I've lived in this house for 20 years and they're the first systems I've had in this house that I've going, I'm done. I don't need to do anything to these things. I don't need to put a cable on there. I don't need to put another piece of anything on them. Uh, they are exactly to me perfect. And as a sound engineer, that is hard, hard, hard to come by because there's always something that bothers me about sound no matter where I go uh, and it's it's a curse because if I go to a concert and they've got you know 3.5k at you know five or six db with a you know 0.4 q on it uh, in the positive it will drive me crazy all night long or that mid bass hump that is masking the mid range that you're going, can you not hear that? You know, those kinds of things drive me crazy. So these are, this is the first time I've ever had two systems that are both equally as thrilling to me. And at least the Martin Logan system, I can tell you if there is a gnat in that recording studio, I know what mic it was next to. It's super, super revealing. And it just, a, a just feels like a whole wall of sound coming at me. I might get in trouble for this one, but do you see streaming media being able to match um, vinyl's quality? I think it's different. You know, it, it's never going to be the same. Uh, I love vinyl and I love what it does for me. I, I think a lot of the reason that I love vinyl is because I've always enjoyed the, the ritual. Uh, I like, but, but it was the way I was raised, right? I, I love picking up an album and the first sense that I get from album, from an album outside of obviously you're picking it up and you're visually seeing it, but that smell, oh my God, it's like, it's, it's intoxicating to me it's it's a, a smell that I know what's coming and it's going to be awesome. Even if it's not, it's going to be awesome. And it's where so many of us learn to listen to full albums. I am a total album guy. If you tell me to listen to a cut, I'll, I'll maybe listen to the cut, but I'm going to put it on the beginning of the whether it's a digital or, or vinyl, uh, I'm going to put it on at the beginning and I'm going to play it all the way to the end. Um, I'm not so much in belief that all vinyl is better than all digital, nor am I of the belief that all digital is better than all vinyl. I've heard them so many times trump each other, but to me, it's not even, that's not even an issue. It's, it's some of it is where am I located? So if I've got something that I feel sounds better on vinyl and I happen to own it and I happen to be in the one room in my life that I can listen to it, fantastic. That's what I'm putting on. Um, if the digital version to me sounds better, then I'll put that on. Uh, I'm not linked to a particular format, um, but and I don't really, I think picking vinyl or digital only is like, a Republican or Democrat. It's, are you kidding me? Seriously. It's like, there's so much good to both and I can never play my VPI on an on a airplane or I could never play my VPI where I'm sitting right now, or I could never play my VPI going down the river when I'm kayaking, but I can be listening to high resolution no matter where I am in any situation. And I'm a super happy camper. Um, so where do I fall on that? I fall in, listen to what freaking makes you happy. If you like whatever it is, if it makes you happy, then, then go for it. You'll never hear a complaint from me. I think it's, I think the whole, I, anytime I hear it as an argument, it, it just, it, it holds no water to me. It's, it's, it's just not an argument. It's, it's like, never compromise what you think is best in the area that it's 
that it's possible then. So unless you got a turntable everywhere, turntable's not better everywhere. It's just not there. So listen to what's the best in any situation that you're in, which brings me to if you're in your car, don't hook up your system to the Bluetooth. Hook it up wired wired that baby right and if you're and if you're really cool i don't know where it is get yourself a get yourself a little uh, uh dragonfly and and hook it up through that it even sounds better so you know whatever you want to whatever you want to listen to whatever piece of music that you want to listen to pick the best thing that you got where it is uh, i was i was a little stiny when i did an experiment a few years back i had a very very cheap turntable uh, that I bought for $29 at Bed Bath & Beyond just to see what would happen. And I recorded on the, that unit, I recorded MP, MP3s or whatever files. Uh -huh. And they sounded better on, on, the, on the files than they did from when you bought the CD. It's, it's, it was, I don't I could, understand how that I could, I could maybe see that because, you know, I got to tell you, there, there's some, there was some, really and we all wanted them to be better but there was some really bad cds for about 30 years yeah. i mean really bad and you would every now and then you would come across a gem like you'd come across a a uh donald fagan nightfly um or you would come across a tony futuro uh 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 title album something that you're just going oh my god that really sounds so good but it was really more the exception than the rule almost every time at that point in history you could count on an album sounding better and totally blowing it away but if you've been listening for the last five years that is absolutely no longer true even a little bit um the best recordings i've ever heard made or have been made within the last five years uh, across the board, you had to have a Bill Schnee or a Kuki Marenko, uh, someone that was so incredible in the studio that they understood how to transfer that emotion from the instruments to a tape machine. Most were not like that. And I still, I always, it always pissed me off when I saw recording engineers using tones telling me that the reason that they did that was because they had to normalize it for a car system. Here's the deal. If you listen to a great recording, it's going to sound great in your car, period. So yeah. I never bought into, you know, make them, you know, st stack them deep, sell them cheap, um, you know, make them as fast as you can. Uh, and, and let's use tones because this is what a five inch car speaker sounds like that. I always thought that was horse crap and it was and it is um so um, i'm trying to think of where you even asked me to begin with <laughs> but the last five years you will hear some recordings that you're going oh my god uh, perfect example bedroom recording billy eilish are you kidding me her brother made that recording in their bedroom there has try go go to the 60s 70s 80s 90s find one album that's got bottom end like that one there's none zero yeah so, well, let's see what comes close uh uh bella fleck yeah. uh flight of the cosmic hippo yep. there was one there was one that's why everybody you go to a rate uh, uh audio store and yep. everybody played the same thing because there was so few stuff that actually just like totally blew you away now it's like Tons of stuff blows you away. If you're on Cobuzz, check this out. It's a it's a file. It's a a a, 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 a playlist that I did. Actually, I've just it's kind of an ongoing playlist that I've done. But I only put stuff on there that's like total acid test to your system. Um, but the stuff is recorded unbelievably well. Like you guys have heard that Celeste stuff, right? It's like not only not only do, does the tonal balance really work, right? I mean, it goes super, super low and the extension on the top end is just mind blowing, but it's a whole wall of sound. There's no such thing as a left and right. It's just this whole wall of beautiful music and you're going, 
if if I would have had that kind of stuff in like 1979 when I got into the audio industry selling audio, I'd be a millionaire by now because this kind of stuff makes, you know, you get a Radio Shack speaker and this stuff sounds pretty good on it. But again, it's just the recording quality in general has gotten so much better. And then if you take a look, if you guys are CoBuzz fans, uh, if you take a look at uh, the new releases every week about... I'd say these days, 80% of it is high resolution. You're getting a good 80% high resolution on there. So it, that the collection is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's, it's we're, we are, as music lovers, this is the most exciting time so far that, that to be alive as a music lover because you just got so much wonderful stuff just at your fingertips. If you're not pinching yourself every time you open up CoBuzz, or if you're not staying up till 2.30 and 3 o'clock just about every night because you just can't get away from the beauty, then you're not doing it right. Either you're not doing it right or I'm not doing it right. Maybe I've just got too much of it. I was on a meeting this uh, yesterday morning at 9 o'clock and I am, I'm, it was a Zoom meeting like this, and I'm going, oh, please don't let me fall asleep, because I was listening to this new um, uh, Aloe Black uh, record, and let me tell you, oh my God, the music was just unbelievable. It was so emotional. It, it, it just touched me, uh, and I just couldn't stop listening, so we're, it's a wonderful time to be alive right now for us. And do you, did you publish those lists on Cubas? Cool. Uh, I publish a lot of stuff on Streaming Music Matters. The stuff that means the most to me, um, I, I share on Streaming Music Matters. Oh, uh, the, the, but, but the playlist I was telling you about just a second ago, and if I can get to it while we're doing this, I'll do it. Uh, if not, I'll share it with you later. But it's called Wow 2. Um, w, 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 W-O-W, and then, you know, two large eyes. Uh, wow 2. And that is my playlist. And uh, I actually love all of the music there. If there's anything that I put on a playlist, it's not because it's a piece of demo g- material. It's something that I would listen to going down the, going down the road. Um, so I want it to be unique. I want it to be something that would, that would really take your hi-fi or your, or your headphones to the limit. Um, but I didn't want it to be hope. Uh, this doesn't offend anybody, you know, Diana crawl, pill me a great. Cause if I hear that one more time, I'm going to stick a sharp pencil on my neck. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you guys, you guys follow me on Streaming Music Matters. We got about 2,500 real music lovers, tons and tons of, of musicians there, tons of, of uh, uh, engineers. Um, but the one thing that we all have common on that side is the main focus around it is music, whether it be new music, whether it be old music. Um, but it's just it's very, very music based, a very much of a um, music oriented site, but not just people sharing things, but people talking about the music that they share. I know I talk about the music I share a lot uh, because as now and as always, music is, you know, one of the most important things in my life. So this is a question from Greg, which is pretty appropriate. First of all, he wants to know, you know, he's really happy. Koba subscriber, he loves it. That's great. That's Greg. And he says, I'm curious about the sources of the mastering for many of the Koba's releases. Often there's no clear information about the dates of the mastering or what the source of the recording is. One example comes to mind, 16 bits, 44K version of Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. It's not clear which of the many releases this is from. Is, is the mastery engineer and date mastering something that could be added to the information about in terms of sound quality? Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, it probably won't be done anytime soon. Um, 
it's a, it's a lot of work. There, 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 in fact, there's a lot of metadata that's not provided that I would love to have provided. And you're really just scratching the, the, the surface with the Pink Floyd, um, with the Pink Floyd unit. Um, my main desire right now is to get classical music um, with the metadata that can actually be searched the way it should search. And if people were thinking about this kind of thing in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, we wouldn't be, you know, we wouldn't be in the shape that we're in. But when you have companies, and this this works the same with exactly what you're talking about, most record labels who also didn't have a clear vision of the way that metadata would be used in the future, just did a horrible job with it. So, so much of it, even from label to label is not the same. So what you're asking, while it makes all kinds of sense, what it's really going to take is going to take a, uh, it's going to take some heavy lifting. It's going to take some heavy lifting and a lot of manual labor to get this done. And so far the, the closest guys that have stepped up to the table on this is, have been Arun. Um, they're doing a pretty good job, I think, with metadata in general. Um, but I don't know what to tell you. You're, it, no, I guess the, the, the simple answer is no. But if I would have just said no, <laughs> it wouldn't have, uh, it, you wouldn't have had any background of what's going on now. So don't think that this is information that people are trying to hold from you. Uh, we're not trying to hold it from you. Spotify is not trying to hold it from you. Title's not trying to hold it from you. It's just trying to get the main metadata even into the system um, so that you could even find Dark Side of the Moon to begin with. Brian Wilson asks, I'd like to see radio functionality, machine generated playlists like Pandora, Spotify. Is that going to happen? To yeah, it will. Um, we, we've got that on our roadmap. And I think that is a super, super important uh, uh, feature to have on your system. Um, but we don't have it yet. It's probably not going to be for another. If I had to guess, I would say it'll be six months to a year. Uh, I the way I use radio when I use radio, which isn't that often for me, but I totally get it. Like my wife, she is a radio nut. She is like Pandora. That's how much of a radio person she is. And she knows it stabs me too, right? She knows I can't stand it. Um, so I'll go in there and I'll go, well, well, baby, gosh, you're listening. I can remember pulling her downstairs. This was like, I don't know, seven or eight years ago. And I'm going... You know, I just, I heard you listening to whatever it was she was listening to. Come on down here and listen to it with me. And, and so she did. And she comes down and, and I said, do you see how much better this sounds? And she goes, oh, yeah, wow, that sounds a lot better. And I'm going, it's great. So, so what do you think? She goes, I don't care. And she walks away. She turns her Pandora back on. She's cleaning up and doing Whatever she's doing, but I think radio fit function to to really get back to the question, super super important for so many people, and I am dying to have it. Uh, for for now, the only solution that we've got is room or another service, um, and it wouldn't hurt my feelings at all if you guys do other service for other services for different things. When I want to listen to radio, like if I'm going down the river or, or whatnot. I, I do a lot of kayaking and about half the time I've listened to something. And if I'm dying to just listen to some genre like funk, I'll, I'll go to Pandora, like a funk, boom, put it on. I'm paddling my, you know, tail off and I listen to radio there, but uh, yeah, no, we don't have it. And I totally agree with you. I'm dying to get it. Ian writes, what does Cobuzz mean? Great question. Cobuzz is a, um, you've probably seen them and just not know what it is. It's, a, it's an ancient Asian instrument. It's, it's typically a one or a two string instrument. So it, look, it looks sort of like, uh, uh, almost like a, 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 pre, a prehistoric guitar <laughs> or not prehistoric, but, but very much historic. So it's, it's got a long rod on there and typically it's got a little, tuner on there that you can tighten up the string and it's held down at the other end with something and then there's a little uh, there's a little uh, uh, 
backing to the koba or to the guitar is if you would a little little backing and then the the neck comes up to it like this i've got a picture of me playing one actually um and it was totally disrespectful when i did it uh and what these were used for were only shaman at the time. It, only the holy men could could play this instrument. And the instrument was said to uh, ward off evil spirits or even heal people, uh, can sometimes even preventing death. So my general joke is, you know, if, you, if you're concerned with going away, if you're concerned with evil spirits, you you may want to go ahead and get Koba. So I could, that's what it is. That, that's, that's what the instrument is. And my disrespectful story is uh, it was actually my last, my last time to Paris. I was at Koba's and up on a shelf, I see a Koba. <laughs> and I'm going, guys, can, can I play it? <laughs> and the guy, one of the guys were going, Sure, Dave, no problem. Well, I've got like, you know, 60 people looking at me. This was in the middle of a company-wide meeting, right? That, you mind if I play that? And, and this other guy gets it off from me. And so I grab it like a guitar and I'm bending the chords like I'm like I'm Jimi Hendrix or something, right? Everybody starts totally howling because nobody's even ever touched this thing. And I'm playing like I'm, I'm Eddie Van Halen on the, on it, just, you know, goofing off. But it was it was really a, a pretty funny moment. But at that point, I'm pretty sure I became a shaman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got another question from Larry. He wants to know, can Cobas provide cast information on, on operas? You identify people with generic info such as tenor or soprano. Many operas have more than one tenor or soprano. I'd like to know if they could see more cast information. We put out more, more data like that than anyone. So, yeah, because we work on it every single day. And if you guys, I mean, in, in some of those, uh, some of those opera books or, or, or symphonic books are really, really quite detailed. And we've got a lot of them at Cobuzz. We high, we've got, Oh gosh, probably what's well, a whole staff. It's a whole team. The only thing they do all day long, every single day is write music, research music, put it out there for you guys to see. And you'll see those like in little booklets and whatnot um, uh, throughout Coba. There's hundreds of thousands of them. Not everything has it, but we sure are working to make sure that as much stuff um, as much not just opera, but really everything has as much information as it can possibly have on there. And then we also try not to just do facts, but also do, you know, human stories about the artists as well. So you'll see a whole lot of that stuff, but yeah, yeah as much as possible. And opera and classical are probably the two they're just the two hardest because there's so many, there's just so, so many of them. And the metadata that was stored to begin with was just typically sometimes non-existent. And it, the next level above non-existent was incomplete. The next, uh, the next level above that is complete, but incorrect. And then you get to kind of the Holy grail um, from time to time that you'll get like kind of everything that was really happening in there. But it is our desire to put as much of that stuff up as possible. It's also a big, big thing with Rune as well. But will you ever get it all? No, it never, ever, ever will you get it all. I say that never, ever, probably never in my lifetime. And Dan asks, how do you select which albums are offered on Cobus? Are there any labels or, or artists that refuse to offer the content? Yeah, yeah. I mean, up until just recently, I mean, I'm, I'll just give you an example from from a few that have been kind of popular. Tool, you could not find Tool on any streaming service, and we ended up getting them in in high resolution. Uh, now, uh, since then, um, we were the first to to to, to get them, but. Uh, but but not high resolution. But yeah, there's all kinds of artists that go, you know, you guys that are streaming totally suck. We hate you and we'll never stream on your 
system. For years and years, the Beatles never streamed anything, right? But let if you if you come to reality, which this is, I think just reality in a lot of cases there's there's sort of two realities in the case of a tool you didn't need to stream you already got all the money you ever need you don't have to stream if you're the beatles you don't have to stream you're not doing it to to make a paycheck it doesn't really matter if you get one stream or 10 million streams it just doesn't matter you've kind of already arrived right but a, a friend of mine made a point and this was about five or six years ago um, when I was on a panel at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, someone was asking about the Beatles. And it was just kind of breaking my heart that they that you couldn't stream. Sort of breaking my heart. It didn't break my heart real bad because I already owned everything, right? The things that I don't own, I put on a hard drive, which my hard drive is having to get less and less and less full these days. But at least I had them on there. But it would have been nice if the Beatles would have, would have been on there. And um, so someone asked about the Beatles. Why aren't the Beatles streaming or the Beatles don't need to stream or something like that. And, and it was Chris Conacher who said that. He said, if the Beatles aren't streaming in the next couple of years, your kids won't know who the Beatles are. So I mean, that to me was totally profound and it was totally right on. It was totally true. If we tend to think of everyone like our own little group, like everyone isn't in the San Francisco Audio Football Society. Everyone isn't like, I'm 61 years old. Everyone isn't 61 years old. My kids will probably never buy physical media. The only way they would have physical media is if I gave it to them. And if I gave it to them because it wasn't part of their life when they were growing up themselves, they never had the, there, there's never a necessity to, to go through a ritual to listen to music, they probably won't. Um, so, you know, take it for what it's worth, but we'll go away soon. When we go away, physical media won't be around. There is no reason for it, not really. Uh, not unless you're a collector and there's still, there's always gonna be those vinyl guys out there, but it's always gonna be a tiny percentage of what's really going on. Um, so, uh, I'm trying to think of where the, <laughs> what was it? What was the initial question? Boy, boy, I went around a rabbit hole on that one. I have no idea. <laughs> okay. Well, next. <laughs> okay. Um, Gregory, our, our own Gregory Morgan from the SFAS board asked, I noticed you have a lot of live hot tuna recordings. I was at a number of these of their shows and it's great to really relive, relive those memories. I know that there were four McCabe shows early and late shows on two days but you're recording on this date, not whether it was early or late. Is this how you received it? Did these, they, did these come from the bands this way? No, it come from the label this way. Yeah. We don't get anything from a band per se. Everything comes from a label and all the metadata that they give us. That's why we have so much metadata. We actually use it. Um, but, you know, the, the, the label didn't say it was early or late. It just, you know, if they, if we would have gotten it, we would have put it in there. Okay. Um, one of our members, Re Regis, has got a, a very technical question. It's way over my head. Do you want to give it a shot? Yeah, go for it. Okay. If I can't answer it, I'll just tell you I can't answer it. Or Yeah. Uh, for many years, I've been using J River on a PC controlled by an Android tablet. I'm now a Cuba a Coba subscriber and still not interested in Ruin. Um, unfortunately, J River does not support Cobas directly. So I'm currently using J River as a DLNA open home renderer with bubble up on um, bup. Bubble UMP. UPMP. UPMP. Yeah. yeah. So we're running the same PC and bubble up server so running on the Android tablet. This is not very stable. What better setup would you recommend keeping J River in the picture? Uh, I don't know. I don't do, I don't do J river. I haven't for years. It feels like DOS to me. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to be your J river guy, but I can tell you they, they, so it's a really complicated program, but yeah, there, unless there's, I, I don't see a real reason to use J river anymore because it's, it's kind of an old program in there. It's just, just better stuff out there to use. The reason people use it is because they've gotten used to it. 
and the only people that like change are wet babies. So I get it. Um, but yeah, nah, our DLNA, I, I don't want to say it sucks, but it sucks because DLNA sucks because there's just not a hard standard, right? When you start flipping standards and someone changes a code in their DLNA that's not standardized, it's going to mess everything else up. So I don't like I don't like using DLNA on our systems unless what we've got the DLNA for was actually meant and tested with a specific piece. Like there are a couple of things that do work pretty good on DLNA with our system, but it's only things that have, have been tested. Uh, J River wouldn't be one of those. So I hope that's not, I didn't, I don't mean that to be insulting. I just mean it to be like, you know, you're gonna have to call deal and call Jim. <laughs> you know, Jim's still around. Is he? Is he still? Uh, is he still running that outfit? I know he was get, giving it to Matt for years, but that didn't turn out. I don't, I don't know. Cool program, and I, I give those guys a lot of credit for being. You know, I like people that are the like the first guys that do something really right. I think Jay River was probably the first the first company like first year's music management company that really you could start getting really really good sound quality out of j river these days to kind of modernize it a little bit uh not your that you're interested in changing but if you're interested in something like that i'm really a big audio Arvana fan okay steve asks what current limitations exist for streaming cobas are there any? I mean, on what side? Uh, there's really not, none for us. I mean, not at least not for what we're doing. We don't really even have a limitation for 360 or DSD or, uh, or, or, or Atmos. We just don't do them yet because we need, we've got an engineering team that's really focused and they're not, you know, it, it's not like an Amazon team. They're, they're small and, you know, they kind of get what they've got to get done every single day. So. I'm thinking more from a technical perspective, meaning are any users of any technology today that you're aware of limited in any way in obtaining access to COBUS? Uh, only technically, and it technically, I mean, um, there's a lot of people that uh, that stream title or stream, when I say stream, uh, wirelessly stream other services, that from time to time I get calls, of, oh, your your service is cutting out. No, it's not. Your your service is cutting out. It's like hardwire everything. When you start streaming true 24192, those are not tiny files. Uh, so, you know, you need a fairly big pipeline. The only way that I've ever been successful at it 100% of the time is a hardwire. And it's the only thing that'll do it um, without, without, compromising um, your signal. Plus, just like in recording, which is one of the reasons I love 24 bits over 16 bits, just like recording and anything that you do that has to do with music, you want to have some headroom. So you never want to be hitting that limit. You know, like, oh, you know, it's 24, 182, but I'm, I'm making it. It's just, it's not quite skipping, but it feels like it might any second. You want some headroom on top of that. You want that flow to be consistent you want it to be um you don't want it to have a bottleneck anywhere if that makes any sense so really the technical limitations have been gone for four years now three years now and i'll expound upon that just a little bit i think it was three years ago the average internet speed was 2.3 megabits per second now it's 60 um, and there's a lot of us that have got, you know, thousand, I'm, I'm a thousand up, thousand down guy, kind of guy. The only thing that keeps me from being Scandinavian is I'm not tall, blonde, or good looking, but man, I've got their internet speeds, right? <laughs> I was so happy. Yeah. But when I first started working for Tidal, I, I was over in the Nordics, right? And, and everybody there, they were going, oh yes, we have, we have a thousand up, thousand down. And I'm going, gosh, I've got like 20 up and 20 down, right? It's like, you've got a thousand. It just seemed like a dream to me. But now really almost everybody, unless you're in one of those weird areas that you just, like I got a couple of friends that are in certain parts of the Rocky Mountains 
that they, they just can't get, you know, decent service. But most of us these days, the technical the technical limitations are totally gone. The physical limitations to the technical limitations are still there because they sold these things for many, many years, right? You guys all know what these are, right? Sonos. That I mean, you could you could have two megabits per second and 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 do three twenty kilobits all day long on its ear. Pandora, oh my God, no problem. But the thing is, is most people got used to streaming wirelessly. They were streaming, you know, usually 256 kilobits per second, not 9,500, right? So, they, well, gosh, the, the Sonos works fine on Pandora. Why won't, I, I just spent $10,000 on a, on a machine and it won't do wireless. <laughs> It's not the same thing. You're dealing with a physical limitation uh, because the technical limitation is totally gone. There is none. Years ago, we would do a lot of caching. Basically, yes. we gather the bits and pray that we got enough of them. In, and then, you know, someone pulls the plug and the music's still going for about 10 seconds. Yeah, so you're buffering. You, you are heavy on the buffering. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, if you when this thing first started, I, that, that's so funny that you mentioned that, Steve. Because um, I remember when when even when when I was with Tidal, um, I, I, that was kind of a, a thing that I would do. I would I would hit play and pause, and then you have a little conversation for a few minutes, and then go back and hit play. If you've ever uh, uh, gone to a show in a hotel, oh my God, hotels are. There's a there's a physical limitation for you there. Places that don't have Ethernet, right? Like I'll go to a particular hotel, almost all of them, and it may be for a show. I go to all the shows. I love the shows. Um, and about half the rooms I go into. Oh, so gosh, I'd be I'd be streaming Cobus if we had any any uh, you know anything to do it with, <laughs> but they don't. So, uh, D David. I don't know if I missed it when you were displaying your your systems, but do you did you identify the streaming unit you use? Mm. I've got so many. Um, I've got uh, and I swap them out. So the one the one downstairs, I think I told you, was a Pi. That uh, that because I was interested in that. There's a lot of people that are building these these hundred hundred fifty dollar endpoints for Rune. And I wanted to know how one sounded, but geez, I just don't have time to sit down and build a computer. So a buddy of mine, Neil Small, who's got a who's got a um, uh, a user group, a room user group uh, uh, on Facebook, he's going, Dave, I'll, I'll just make you one and I'll send it to you. And he did. What a great guy! And I love it. It is just absolutely fantastic. I've got that going through a. I think I've got that going through a peach tree, um, a peach tree deck. That, that was a company I, I, I owned for a, for, a, for a lot of years. Um, and um, did I just hear that you said you owned peach tree for a few years. Yeah, I'm I was a I was the co founder of peach tree audio. Wow, I uh, so I've got an, a render, I've got the new name that I just got downstairs. Of course, I've got some Sono stuff, uh, I've got the uh, blue sound, uh, the uh oh god four or five more uh they're just all over the place i've got i've got tons and tons of, of streamers the one i'm really really excited about though is this name I'm, I'm looking forward to getting that and then i'll be getting an oral lick in uh in the next couple of weeks and i'm really looking forward to that too i've also got some oral lick stuff that's right i've got a uh i've got their what is it called um it's their big one, the big, the big oral extremer, but it's from last year. So I'm about to get the, I think it's called a G2 or something like that. And I'm really looking forward to that. But if, if you need to declutter a bit, you can send some my way. <laughs> yeah, you are so kind. I mean, it's, it's, you've got a heart. That, that is really. <laughs> it's just the way I was brought up. <laughs> Terry, Smith, good. Terry Smith asks, any plan to add smartphone remote control of streaming from PC or Mac? Boy, I... You, it, who asked that? Terry Smith. Terry is reading off my song sheet that I have been, I've been begging this company to do this for 
since I since I started, they're sick of me even saying it. I, I say it every week in a meeting uh, because I think that's all some people need. Uh, Terry, very uh, that, that was a, that, that's a great thought. I, I want it. I'm I'm going for it. I'm not sure how much traction I'm getting, honestly. But wouldn't that be a great feature that you could just like your your daughter, my daughter's in 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 um, um, college now, and she could just you know while she's doing her thing, she could just hook it up to her little stereo that I got her, which are just a power powered speakers because that's it. They are in a small dorm. She could control it with that. I think I'd love to be able to do that. Okay, Terry, I'm. I'm still going for it. You guys write me though. If there's like features that you want, we do have the ear of these guys. So if there are, I think that's a brilliant suggestion, but if I get that suggestion from a hundred people and I pass it on, it's a lot more likely that it gets traction instead of God, if David says one more time, why don't we have a remote control? I'm going to just kill him. Um, it'd be nice to have it from other people too. Okay. Um, there's something I'm not not sure I understand what the question is exactly because I haven't been uh, privy to it. Oliver asked, how much of the material from Coba's content providers contains digital watermarking? None watermarking. that I know of. We're not in MP3. That's where you're going to really see watermarking. Um, but I'm aware of none, uh, even through Warner. So uh, probably the easiest one to find it on is uh, that three doors down tune, or at least that's what I usually look for it. Uh, I can't even remember the tune. God, I'm getting too old to remember stuff these days. Um, but none as far as I know. There, if, if there is something that's watermarked, I, I, I don't know about it, nor have I ever heard it. And if you have, would you please uh, give me an example? Um, the I don't have any. Oh, I mean, any of you guys. I mean, uh, I hope you'll all join me on Streaming Music Matters. That's where I am, and you'll always be able to find me. And so you can always PM me or um, or, or even put it just right on the, the post there. I don't really mind uh, controversial posts being on there. Or if it's something that we can't do, I'll just go, oh, sorry, we can't do it or, or whatever. But if you – or – Oh, I just found a watermarked album. That doesn't, that wouldn't offend me. That would just, that would just uh, uh, um, give me a, a reason to go uh, to the home office. Hey, this thing is watermarked. Click. Watermark su watermarking sucks. I'm, I'm glad that's, uh, that we don't have too much problem with that. Okay. Or any that I know of. Got a nice comment here from from Albert. Hello, David. Thank you for, for presenting to the club today. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a Sublime Plus subscriber. I like it because I get extra bandwidth, high res streaming, discounts on purchases. I found that some of my purchases play perfectly on Cobuzz, uh, but certain songs are not available when streaming through Ruin. Do you know why that is? If there's a fix? Uh, no, that would really be a Ruin question. Uh, but those guys are maybe the smartest people I've ever met in my life. Um, so I would definitely pose that to Rune, uh, because there should be no reason they're standard files. And if you've got them in a place that everything else is playing them, um, I can't think of a, a reason that Rune wouldn't index them, but it may be just a, that may be just one step that you're not taking. Uh, that's what it kind of sounds like, but the Rune guys will be able to tell you in a heartbeat. They're like I say, really, really smart guys. Well, I think we've, Pretty much gone through most of the questions that, that were posed. Um, does anybody David, have any? David, I have a question for you. Um, I do home networking with the Google environment, and on the Google Home, you can pick whoever your music provider is, but Cobuzz isn't one of them. And I understand you don't do radio because they have Pandora and Spotify and things like that, but to get around your remote control, question, you could voice command if Cobuzz would interface with Google without just having to cast to it, because right now I cast it, but it would be nice if you could actually, it could actually be your provider. So then I could say, okay, play Beatles for me, something yeah, like that. Yeah, I would cast really, I, th I think, Leslie, that is beyond our generation. 
that is going to become maybe one of the most important features that there is. Uh, CoBuzz has been working on that for quite some time. It's not quite as easy as it sounds like you just don't turn a knob and, and this works. There's a whole lot of um, uh, heavy lifting that's got to be done manually on, on voice related things. And so we just honestly don't have the crew to, to even be able to start tackling something like that. Hopefully there'll be a, something AI in the future that'll be available to us. I would think that that would probably be available to us faster than we would be able to actually do it manually. Because at this point, you know, we would, we, we would do this just like a lot of the other streaming services that have got a lot larger staff than we do. You can't just do it in English, right? You got to do it in, French and Italian and Spanish and just all of so we just honestly there's a few things like that that we probably won't have the capacity to to do for for quite some time maybe just, maybe someone like room could do that at least for their environment because they have the subscription they do the zones mm -hmm. so then you mix it with if this then that and then you can get Amazon to work that way if yeah. necessary that way you have voice commands as opposed to getting on the app on a computer or on a device and doing it. Yeah, I do it from my phone, basically. Yeah. yeah. I cast from my, I get the Cobuzz app and I cast from my phone to whatever. Yeah. And it works yeah. really well with Rune too, but yeah, there's no voice commands. Uh, that's the piece that if yep. this, then that's that, or the some kind of, it's, it's that sort thing. of bridge that you well, need. I'm, a, I'm of the age that I still, I, I, this is still magic to me when I can just press the button and it goes to it. But I get it. It's like my kids are the same way. They're going, well, dad, you know, it's not voice command. I'm thinking, but it's, but it's right at your fingertips. Do you know how easy it is to get to music and how hard it used to be? But that all sounds to them like I walked 20 miles to school uphill both ways in the snow, right? <laughs> it sounds exactly the same to them. Mm -hmm. David, I, uh, I have a subscription to Cobuzz and periodically I run up against certain albums that list everything, the songs, the, the whole ball of wax, the length of time and when I click on it to listen to a particular song, it plays for 29 seconds. Uh, I have a reason, I mean, I, I, I kind of think I know why, but I'd like to hear from you what's going on, please. It did that to me recently too. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's just a rights issue. It's a, we don't have the rights for some reason to, you know, there, there, there's a couple songs somebody uh, showed me last week that did it, but it's not real, it's not rampant but it's, it's, you're going to find it from time to time. And it could be on, you know, the latest, even um, Jay-Z album. Um, and I'm using that because I'm pretty sure there's not a whole lot of Jay-Z fans here that you're going to be able to check my, my math on it. <laughs> because I don't know, I'm not a big Jay-Z fan either. But, you know, the most popular song might not be uh, available. And most of the time that happens, it's, it's, well, not most of the time, every single time. It's it's the label's uh, um, preference. And some they just don't they just don't allow you to do it. And yet um, and yet you have the album listed in, in your contents. That's usually because it's uh, it's it can we, we have the download store and so you can most likely buy it. Gotcha. But Thank not you. you can't listen to it. Or at least right now, a lot of times when you see that happen they're just waiting for rights to be released and uh so you'll see some uh grayed out and then you know two weeks you go back and it's no longer grayed out it's just it's so hard to answer these only because there 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 are millions and millions of things of these details that we deal with every day some of those like you probably you might not ever see I mean it could be just a whim of the artist a perfect example uh Van Morrison Tupelo Honey it's like I don't know about you guys but I really like that album I've got it in my collection but Van doesn't like it so it's just not streamed you know period and, and so there's all kinds of reasons it, it it could be grayed out 
Uh, I'm just glad it's it's the exception, not the rule. And one really cool thing that I'm that I think is even more important than that is we've gone from 40 to 60 million um, cuts in in two years, which is a huge huge feat. Um, but you'll 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 see much much more stuff offered than you will see it held back. Thank you, David. No, so, no problem. So, so tell us a little bit about physical Kobas. Uh, you have a, a server farm somewhere that you put our, all your music on, and then we as subscribers go to it wherever the nodes are. If it, I'm out on the West Coast, so you have one maybe in Denver or Utah or somewhere, and somebody back east of Atlanta, you go to New York or something. Am I talking correctly? No, you're, you're, you're dead spot on. That's exactly what happens when we first started and we were in beta. Everybody was streaming from the UK. Yes, but I had you, done that. I did that as well. Yes. Yeah. So if you think about doing that, it's it's possible. I mean, digital is really quite fast, but, but you're going <laughs> to, pardon me, you're going to run into some issues from time to time. Or if one of the servers, we, we got a bunch of them in the United States right now. If one of them goes down, it's like <clears throat> redundancy, almost like a, um, a RAID drive. Um, so one may go down and, and another one may have to take over. If you ever experience something weird happening, that may be, you know, if you see that glitch, yes, you are in the matrix. <laughs> you, you may have a, you may have a, a server that's, that's glitching or that's gone down and they have to switch to another one. Thank you. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, Hey, by the way, guys, I'm really enjoying this and I'm in no huge hurry. So we can just, my wife's actually not in town. So I'm, I can go as long as you want. Yes, sir. What can I do for you, Oliver? All right. Thank you. Do you see Kobes, Kobes as being genre agnostic, classical versus rock versus jazz? Or is there any focus in one area and another coming in the future? Gosh, I, that is, I love that question. Um, the reason I love that question is because I worked for Tidal and, and when we went from Tidal not owned by Jay-Z to Tidal owned by Jay-Z, it looked like, you know, if you were into rap and hip hop, we got you covered. Everything else sucks. It just, that's what you see. And that, I don't like that. Uh, I, I wouldn't like it if it were all classical or if it were all folk or anything. The best music in the world is the music that you like. So that's the music that you should be presented with when you're on any uh, any service. Do you guys mind if I share my screen one more time with you? Go for it. So this is what Cobuzz looks like. Uh, can you guys see Cobuzz now? Yep. Okay, this is what it looks like when you just, you know, open up the program. It's, you know, got, it's pretty, uh, it's, it, it just is what it is. Everything is everything. Um, and then what you do and the way you get it to look like you want it to look is you you ch choose the music that you really, really like. So let's say that um, I want this to look like Tidal. I'm just going to switch to hip hop. And guess what? I look like Tidal. And if this is what you dig, baby, I got it for you. I got more of it than you can ever imagine. Right, and it'll just keep going down and keep going down and keep going down. So if I were into classical, these are just the new releases. If I were into classical, I would not want to see that. If I were, were into classical, what I want to see is classical. And that's exactly what you see. These are the new, these are the new recordings that we've just gotten in our classical. And as you can see, most everything is high res. Isn't that incredible? But if you're like, Dave, I am all over the place. That's mine. That's what my that's what my front page looks like. So I get a just an absolute huge variety of music because I am quite uh, my tastes run quite eclectic, and I could be listening to uh, an opera. Uh, in the morning and heavy metal in the afternoon and, you know, something will make me cry in the evening, you know, so it, it just, 
mine looks, you make it look like whatever you want to make it look like. And that's the way it should look. What does it mean by offline library? You can, um, let's say you're, let's say you do have spotty uh, internet, but you still want to have uh, uh, the availability of these files to listen to. Um, this is just one example. You can, you can offline uh, anything that we, that you see up there by offlining. What it means is you're downloading it. You're actually downloading that file to your system. So if you do have say spotty internet or no internet, then you can still play these files. Like on my phone, I, this is where I typically download stuff because I'm usually in normal times. Um, I'm traveling all the time. So I've always got a minimum of five, 600 albums on, on here with probably 30, 40 playlists um, that, that are not dependent on the internet. So when I go to shows and whatnot, I'll use them there. I use like downloaded material there when you can't get to it. Um, another example would be when, like, let's say you're going on vacation to the mountains and they're, you know, the only thing that's there are, you know, electricity. You're lucky to get that. That would be a great time to start downloading or offlining. Uh, and and offlining. there's no charge for that? No. But it's not, but it's not exclusive either. You can do that on most streaming services. Uh, okay. I thought it was, I thought it, you had to pay for that. So uh, if you want to buy it, you do. If you want to be able to put those files anywhere you want them, then, then yeah, you would buy the files. Um, and it, it, somebody just said there were a sublime member. If you are one that buys files, then definitely hop on the sublime membership because if you buy like, I think it's like two or three files per month, you've paid for the, you've paid for the subscription uh, because of the savings. Like you can, you you be able to buy a full high res download for seven eight dollars instead of, you know, twenty thirty forty dollars. It doesn't take much, many of those to download before you've paid for the subscription. So if you are a downloader, that is even though it's even though it's twenty five not fifteen, that ten bucks you'll eat up in the first album for its first second anyway. But usually the first album, so it will definitely pay for itself if you are a downloader. So with downloading, you're you were literally buying the files. Those are yours. You can burn them to CDs. You can do whatever you want with them. Yeah, they exist on your hard drive, right? Well, anywhere you want them. They, or wherever you want. Yeah. Yeah. If you're if you're of the, or if you're of mind and it's a 1644, you could even rip them onto a to a CD. Although I I just think those are like audio jewelry now. <laughs> well, I, I do it occasionally for the car. Yeah, yeah, like like, I, like me, it's like I just stream everything, and I tell people too, it's like if you're, because you get people excited because they're doing new stuff because they haven't had their heart broken yet, but I tell people, you know, don't burn your CD collection on a hard drive. You're just wasting your time. It, first off, I probably have it in 24 bit, uh, and so you can stream it better. But the worst thing about burning anything onto a hard drive is eventually that hard drive is probably going to go belly up. And when it does, the metadata will never be where you think it is. So what I burn these days, just as a tip, when I'm burning things onto my uh, hard drive, um, they're only things that I can't get uh, either full or full or full or uh, extended bit uh, uh, format. Um, so I try to keep as small of hard drive as I can these days. And I only put things on there like Tupelo Honey or Roger Waters Amused to Death because you just can't get that anywhere, right? The original Amused to Death, you can't even buy it anymore. So uh, unless it's used, Roger Waters won't sell it, which totally pisses me off because that's the best Amused to Death. <laughs> Is it uh, possible to make Cobuzz operate in sort of a shuttle or shuffle mode? Yeah, we've got we've got uh, we've got shuffle mode. And is it similar to Rune in that? Yeah, it's, it's just those little cross arrows. Yeah, and and so, but does it have the intelligence behind it to say, "Oh, oh I I know what you like. Let me give you some stuff that you may not have heard before." No, no, because that would be a radio. Ah. Yeah, no, if it shuffles, it'll shuffle. I don't 
I honestly, I've never, I don't, I'm not a shuffler. <laughs> I'm not only an album guy. I, I'm an album guy that I want to hear it the way they put it down. Well, I'd, I'd love never to shuffle the, But a good reason I guess to shuffle would be, uh, if you've got like a thousand play playlist or something that I think that would probably be a good time to shuffle, but I don't even do that. I, I, I should probably do that from time to time. But do you, so you're relying upon the people who work for Cobuzz to identify, let's say new music and try to put it out there like they were, would be a DJ, but they're not live. They're creating playlists. They're creating mixes. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm not, unless it's a, honestly, unless it's a friend of mine or a manufacturer or somebody that I, that I, for a business reason that I would need to listen to a playlist, I typically don't. Um, I'll listen to my playlists only because they mean something to me. And by the way, if you haven't made a playlist, like for your, for your wife or for your husband, for your significant other, um, you're missing a huge opportunity, just a huge opportunity. Mine's called Love Songs for Christy. And they're, they're songs that I've played for my wife. We've been married 30 years. So we've got like, you know, Loggins and Messina and, and Elton John and just all this sappy as hell stuff that whenever she listens to it, she starts crying and puts her head on my shoulder. <laughs> make your wife, make your husband, make your significant other a playlist. It, there's nothing like giving music to someone. One of my friends, uh, Paul Braitlin, who now works for, for Room, he used to work for, uh, for Tidal with me when I was there, just became one of my very best friends when we met. It was just like one of those guys that you go, oh my gosh, I, how, do you, how have you not been in my life, you know, my whole life? We're, we're brothers, right? And he's remained that way. We, we were just very close. We never get to see each other because he lives in Oslo, but we pick up, you know, right where we left off anytime we talk or anytime we do see each other. But for my birthday a couple of years ago, he made me it was about a 50 song playlist. And I got to tell you, it was one of the most special gifts I have ever received. I wasn't expecting it. And he just nailed my musical taste. And it just, I, I still listen to it from time to time. But talk about a gift that you could give that is free to someone that is like a beautiful, beautiful gift to someone. But for musical discovery, that's the hard part. Yeah, it's not for me because I use Rune a lot. Right. And, and, and Rune to me is like the consummate rabbit hole. Uh, I am Mr. Rabbit Hole. I don't even need Rune to be a rabbit, to, for me to go down <laughs> rabbit holes. Um, but if you, Rune makes it a lot easier to end up in a place you had no idea you would go to. You end up on this journey that takes you through places that you weren't planning on going, right? I wasn't planning on falling down that ditch and, you know, rolling down the hill and falling into the creek. But I, I started with King Crimson. I end up with, you know, some obscure weird thing that I've never even heard of. That's why I can't get to sleep before two or three o'clock in the morning, because how could you? We've got all of this. I've only got a few more years to listen to music. I can sleep when I die. Then when they close the, when they close the lid, I can't listen to any more music then. <laughs> so now I'm going to listen to as much as I can. And since it was so late in life that we got this, this abundance of music, it was for all of us, really, probably all of us on this phone call, that I'm still just grateful. I'm grateful to be able to listen to it. And so being as grateful as I am, I listen to it a lot. <laughs> and go down rabbit holes. But the rabbit hole king, there's nothing like Rune going down rabbit holes. Talking about uh, Rune and uh, software applications, do you have specific contracts with developers? Or let's say if I'm a programmer, a hobbyist, and I'm a Cobus subscriber, can I write my own software and connect to you guys, to your servers, and download the music the way I want and surf your, the catalog? 
Uh, in other words, I well, I mean, yeah, Rune really is nothing more than their own thing. That's just their own. Yeah, you could do anything you want to. That's exactly what Rune does. They they take the metadata that we provide and they just load it into their system. Their system has even more metadata and it does other things. So, yeah, I mean, you're basically just playing back music that you're already buying anyway. So, so you, if, you, Rune, if you make your own... You don't have a con sorry. You don't have a contract with Rune or with a Bubble UPN server or with a Audio Nirvana. All these software. Yeah, we do. We we what actually we, yeah we do have agreements with those guys. So um, I could not do it myself. As well, a yeah, you could. You, you I could. You, yeah, because I mean, if you if you're that good, you could. Um, but I mean, unless it was something that commercially viable, there there would be no reason that that. Uh, you know, any streaming service would really sign a contract with you because, you know, that really wouldn't um, further an effort. But if you've got a business plan and you could show that it would, would further the effort of, of what any streaming service is already doing, then it wouldn't be hard to get those contracts at all. But basically it's just, they're just, it, they're just a music manager. That's all, all they are. They're just taking data that's already there, but they're just taking it and managing it, managing it in a very intelligent and uh, user-friendly way. Um, that's, that's the reason I like Rune better than anything else is because I can't go, like somebody was asking me how many servers I've got and then just like a crap load of them, but there are no servers that are like Rune nobody's got that kind of a detail. Nobody's got that kind of a user experience. So if I pick this thing up and I go to blue sound, it is like milk toast to me. And, and I don't, I'm not picking on blue sound. Anybody's that I've used so far is just a far second to, to ruin. Um, that's the, that's the reason I love it is because of the user experience and the user experience to me is worth the price of admission with Rune. Cause I use it so much. <laughs> I want it to be a good experience. And plus I've got so many different servers. I want my, I want to see that on one thing. They were so smart to be able to do that. That that's a smart company. Rune. Do you not like it or are you just a hobbyist? I, I'm the one who sent the question earlier about Jerry Burr. I've been using Jerry Burr for more than 10 years. And, uh, what is it? Jerry Burr? Jay River, oh Jay River, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh oh oh, so, yeah 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 you're you you're you yeah. And I've I've spent so much time um, writing my own metadata, organizing my collection in Jay River, and I ripped uh, SACDs, lots of SACDs. So I have all these uh, DSD files that are not supported by Rune. So it's why I'm not really interested in uh, jumping to Rune. Or I would hold on. Are you saying that Rune doesn't support DSD? It doesn't play uh, ACCD. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. ISOs. And it doesn't index them. It doesn't recognize them. It doesn't know anything about uh, ISOs. J River does. J River does. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You oh. know, I really, really wish Jim could get someone to just take that company over that would really modernize mm -hmm. it. That was the plan. Mm -hmm. But then Matt got hurt and, mm -hmm. and couldn't do you know, couldn't, couldn't take it over because Matt was totally brilliant when mm -hmm. that company really was, was going places. So I, I, you know, it's one of those companies that, that I'm kind of heartbroken over, you know, cause to see what they could have done because really they were the, they were about the first guys out there that were doing anything significant. I used them for a long time. Um, and then I got my heart broken with my own, you know, hard drive, crashing problems and so <laughs> but yeah I'd that's quite a collection with, if you got a lot of SACDs that's yes I'd be happy with running Cobos in a browser on my computer on the rack the problem is how do I control that remotely you don't have a Android application that would run on a tablet to control Cobos on a computer do you no they were asking that before that's a great question and that's something that I've been I've been, be I haven't just been asking, I have been begging my people for two years to do. So, you know, maybe one day they'll, they'll go, 
uh, you know, we know you're Jewish, but here's a Christmas present. We now can <laughs> let you promote it. I want to do that so bad, but that would solve all the problems, really. All that would problems. solve that would solve a lot of people's problems. That would be enough for a lot of people that that's all that they would need, right? Like I tell people that Rune is not for everyone. It's just not. Um, if it's not Rune, then perhaps uh, uh, Audio Arvana may be for you. But even Audio Arvana is not for everybody. Some people just want to run a naked app with a with a remote. And and if you're that simple, if that's something that would make you happy, that I know that would make me happy just from a even just over here, like uh, like when I'm playing my drums. I'd love to be able to have my monitor over here and pull up, uh, you know, just something, you know, on an app, just straight from, from Cobus. I don't have to do that. In fact, when I play these guys over here, I usually just use Bluetooth because re resolution isn't that important when I'm playing my drums. It's just too, I'm not listening for that. Um, but I would love to be able to do just, just straight out native Cobus. Uh, and I can, I just, you know, just haven't hooked it up like that, I guess, yet. <laughs> but yeah, I think I agree with you so much, Regis. I think that uh, for sure that uh, a remote would be wonderful for, for Cobus. Well, David, yeah, I think we're, we're about at the end of our time. We have about five minutes left. If anybody, thank you, guys. Yeah, if anybody has any other questions, but you've been phenomenal. And hopefully uh, you'll come back and talk to us again.